Okay, um, the next thing to recognize is what, what she classifies uh, as a more complex, right? So you, you move from, we're moving from a, a pictorial representation to a symbo S -Y -M -O, symbolic, right? We're moving from a pictorial representation to a symbolic representation. She uses the phrase symbolic code, right? The symbolic code. Um, and I think the example that I've used later in the discussion will really, really solidify what this means um, in, an ex in a very concrete example for Rand, and hopefully that will clarify all the confusion. So we move from a, a pictorial representation to a symbolic representation, and, and the question is, well, why? Um, my, my daughter, when she, was, when she was younger, let's say when she was two or three years old, she saw mommy, she saw daddy, she saw a little brother, and she wanted to represent um, her family unit, her family structure. So um, the first thing that she did, and this is almost Kantian in a sense, right? This is sort of one of Kant's categories, right? She, she recognized quantity as, as a perceptual given, right? It's not something that I need to... Math isn't a perceptual given, but quantity is a perceptual given, right? It's sort of the conditions for the possibility of epistemology. Um, and I, I think that's a little heady, but I think, you know, based on the feedback, I, I know a lot of you understand what I'm saying, right? Uh, for those of you who might not understand what I'm saying, what does that mean? Okay, so my, my daughter my daughter recognizes, and you see this actually on cars a lot now, the back of cars for windshield wipers, or the back of a car, you'll see this all the time. You'll see like an image of like a dad, and then like a shorter version, which I guess is supposed to represent a mom, and then like the number of kids, right? So my daughter might draw this picture. Here's dad, here's mom, here's me, here's my, well, her brother's smaller than her, so. Or was, he's, he's, he's growing up quick, but. Uh, so she might, my daughter might, draw this image, me, my wife, herself, and her brother, as a pictorial representation of family. <clears throat> we already meet, we immediately know that family is now a unit identification, right? And, and I'm not going to get into this because I've already done this, right? In a sense, at this very uh, rudimentary stage, my, my daughter already has an ability, in a Randian sense, of unit formation, unit identification, because we, she recognizes that this unit, the family, is represented by these things, mom, dad, me, and my brother. My daughter gets a little bit older. <clears throat> She's not there yet, but imagine, you know, 15, 20 years from now, she follows in her daddy's steps and she becomes a she becomes a philosopher, gets corrupted by the machine. So imagine, imagine that, you know, imagine she, let's just say for the sake of argument, she becomes a philosopher and she, she recognizes that things are far more complicated than they seem, right? She might return to this idea of family, the unit of family, years later, after taking many, many philosophy classes, and she might want to try and represent what this means as a philosopher, as, a, as, as someone who is critical, almost cynical, of, of, of almost everything, right? How would she represent this? Well, she would try to get to the essential key components of what a family is, right? And she would say a family is that the, in a, in a, an attempt to try and define the essential components of a family, right? Um, and there would be debate on what that is. In order for her to do that, let's say, for example, a contemporary argument might be, and this is a contemporary argument, does a family, should a family be identified as um, a heterosexual household with at least one child? Can you have a family where you have a heterosexual household with no children? Can you have a family, the, the, the classification of the concept family, can that be appropriated to um, um, a homosexual um, uh, household without children, with children, and so on, right? All the variations that we can possibly think of, right? And then you enter the debate, right, so that we can attempt to get to the, the primordial concept, the found, not primordial, but the foundational concept of what a family is. And attempting to arrive at that very symbolic representation or definition or concept of what a family is, right, what I recognize is that this pictorial representation is completely inadequate, right? This cannot represent the stuff that I just explained a couple seconds ago, right? My language needs to become very, very well articulated, the structure of my language, the grammar, the, the, the sense in which my language points to things in the world has to become very, very um, explicit 
in order for me to give a proper representation of, or maybe not a proper, a representation, a well-articulated, to be technical, a well-articulated definition of what the family unit is. So with the symbolic code, um, the symbolic code is, is not limited, right? I wouldn't go so far as saying it's unlimited. I don't know if Rand would say it's unlimited. It's arguable whether it is, I, I, given the fact that language is itself sort of infinite. You can infinite combinations to come up with infinite conceptual abilities. It might be unlimited, but I'm not going to say it's unlimited. So that's sort of up for debate. Um, the rep, the rep, it's definitely larger, so we'll put larger, larger. But it, it obviously has a larger conceptual range. Uh, it being symbolic representation, it has a larger conceptual range. Um, it doesn't represent simple abstraction, it can represent complex abstraction, right? It can represent complex, right? You can talk about the same thing, the unit of family, in a pictorial representation, which is basically this. Or we can talk about the unit of family in terms of a symbolic representation and, you know, think, you know, uh, address concepts like um, the current debate is a family exclusively defined in terms of heterosexual couple with at least one child. Is that, you know, that's, and I'm not, you know, I'm not into the description of family. This is something off the top of my head, right? So is that the essential characteristic for what a family is, right? Can you have a family without children? Can you have a family, um, can you have a family just by yourself? It would seem to say no. So now we see, you know, there's, there's some thresholds that need to be met, right? And so on. That's the attempt that we we try to do. In doing that, you can't do that pictorially, right? Our, our, our pictorial representation is limited in scope. Our, our our conceptual range needs to become broader in order to move from a pictorial representation to a symbolic representation. And that transformation from or that transference, that transition from um, a pictorial representation to a symbolic representation increases the conceptual range. Right? It's an increase in the conceptual range. So um, what I did was I, I, I incorporated two images just for sort of your viewing pleasure, right? On the one hand, a pictorial representation, let's just say we have, uh, we have a range, right? A pictorial representation is sort of, you know, it's, it's limited range. There's, if we're saying that this whole thing is a condition of our conceptual range, Right? And well, I don't know, just so that I give you a quantifiable number. You don't need a quantifiable number at all. You just need to know the concept that it's bigger or smaller. But just so that you sort of have a visual. Let's say that this moves from, uh, this range, of conceptual range moves from 1 to, let's just say, 5. This is purely just for argument's sake, so that you, you understand what I'm attempting to say. And we'll say that 1 represents the pictorial, pictorial representation. Then a pictorial representation just for the sake of pedagogy, pictorial representation moves from, you know, range one to five, right? Within the range of conceptual range, what the conceptual range is. Um, we would say that too, right? That the symbolic range would obviously cover the conceptual, right? Right, so the, the symbolic range would, let's say, go from, and this is the same thing, conceptual range, and we'd say that the conceptual range for the symbolic, right, for the symbolic, goes from, let's say, 1 to 50. You get the idea, right? Basically, that's what she's saying. The conceptual range for symbolic code is larger than the conceptual range for the pictorial representation, right, which is smaller, right? So that's what she's saying, and hopefully this visual gives you an idea of what she's saying, right? All she's saying is that the conceptual range, and, and not only that, right? So there's two things that she's saying, at least two things that she's saying. The first thing that she's saying is that the conceptual range for the symbolic code is larger than the conceptual range for the pictorial representation. The second thing that she's saying is that the pictorial representation has proven inadequate, right? Has proven inadequate in our increase in knowledge and abstraction, right? As our knowledge and abstraction increase, there's a threshold at which our, our, our pictorial representation just can't accommodate it. We need more. 
And that's the transition, right? That's, this is why we transition from one state of affairs, pictorial representation, into another state of affairs. And this would be sort of like the metaphorical threshold. Right? This would be the th threshold. What I'm attempting to describe requires more knowledge and more abstraction. I have to transition then into a symbolic representation. What I'm attempting to describe can be described in terms of just pictorial representation. Well, that's all I need, right? So that's the that's the that's what she's that's that's precisely what she's attempting um, to do. At least that's my interpretation of what she's attempting to do uh, in this section.